Hello fellow RPG makers, my name is Toby and I'm back today with another Zelda style block puzzle. Uh, so what we did last time, we covered pushing a red block onto a red switch to uh, make a chest appear with a key in it so we could open the door and move on. Today we're going to do the same thing in principle but with uh, two chests this time. Uh, color coded so green block goes on to green switch, red block goes on to red switch. So when the player enters this room uh, the first thing they're going to encounter is these three brown uh, crates here. So this isn't um, necessary for this puzzle but uh, I thought it'd be nice to be able to teach the player that if they mess up, um, which they are quite likely to do on this puzzle, they can exit the room and re-enter and the blocks will reposition themselves uh, as events do when you leave uh, a map in RPG Maker. So these are uh, crates here. Basically um, I've just called them block, normal crate graphic, same as characters, action button, set move route, this event uh, to move away from the player with the push sound effect make sure you got skip if cannot move ticked um, and that's that's it for those uh, they're positioned in such a way that um, if they push the middle one forwards they will be forced to leave the room because there's just no way to progress from that point uh, otherwise they, they have to uh, push these two forward and this to the side uh, and then they have to push this one all the way over there um, so they're not not uh, likely to get that right on the first time unless they stop and think about it a little bit. So that's just a handy little way to teach your player to leave the room and come back in to reset the puzzle. Um, so moving on, uh, if you're familiar with the previous video, um, you'll probably need to be familiar because I'm going to go over this quite quickly. But um, So what we did before, we had an event over here uh, that's a parallel process um, and that's um, creating a variable that matches the coordinates for the green block. So this is the green block's um, coordinates. So uh, green block x variable, that's what we've named it, is equal to the game data of the green block that we've created, uh, the green, the, the event that is the green block, um, which is on its map x and the same for y. We did this before in the last video so you should be familiar with that. And the same for the red block over here. So it's quite important to remember to track the position of those events. So then we've got the switches over here. Again, they're pretty much the same as uh, the previous uh, puzzle that we did. It's uh, controlling a variable for the switch, um, setting it to X and Y of the event, uh, the red switch event. Uh, so once it's checking that, it's then constantly checking a conditional branch to see whether the red block x variable is equal to the red switch x variable and the same for the y variables for both of those. If they are the same then it will play a sound effect of the switch going down and then control self switch A which is on which triggers the second page make sure you've got self switch A as the condition for this page and this time the graphic is the switch that has been pressed into the floor. Um, make sure it's below characters and parallel process because um, what we want to have is if the player messes up and they leave the room we want the puzzle to reset itself. Now normally that's really difficult to do with cell switches because uh, cell switches they don't turn themselves off um, unless you physically do that within the event like they, they won't just reset themselves when you exit the map so the way I've done it having a parallel process and then in the event you've got a conditional branch that checks the map ID and the map ID um, if you if you don't know what the map ID is um, go over to the left right click uh, your map that you're working on map properties and then you'll see up here it says ID 008 now that means that this map uh, the ID number is 8 so we can set that as a variable uh, so the game checks so in every single room now I've got a event that checks the map ID as a parallel process and it control variables map ID is equal to uh, the game data map ID um, so that, that basically 
lets the game keep track of what room you're in at what time. So um, what that does is on our second page of the uh, switch event here, if the map ID doesn't match up with the um, with, match up with eight, which this room is the eight the eighth room that I've made if it doesn't match that then it will turn the self switch A off because it's a parallel process which reverts it back to this um, and obviously the block positions will revert back to normal once you exit and re-enter as I explained earlier um, for some reason that uh, doing that didn't actually work on the green switch I don't know why I'm I'm uh, estimating that it's something to do with uh, the game not being able to check it quick enough or something um, because in principle it's exactly the same as the red switch but maybe it just can't keep up with doing two of those at the same time so uh, the way I fix that is on the on the transfer that takes you out of the room I've just set the control variables uh, green block X and Y to zero and double doubly sure I did it on the red one as well uh, that make sure you do that before you transfer out of the room and that basically uh, makes sure that the red and green blocks aren't on top of the switch when you leave the room because otherwise what was happening before um, it may have been turning cell switch A off when I leave the room because the map ID doesn't match but at the same time the green block may still be on top of the green switch and because this is constantly checking to see if that's the case it might just turn self switch A back on I'm not sure if that's how it worked but it sounds complicated but it's really not um, so yeah so that's basically that's how that works so in this puzzle if the green block is on the green switch and if the red block is on the red switch then it triggers the uh, bridge that we've got here so this is a parallel process again checking the uh, variables basically the same as we did for the switches so if the green block X is equal to green switch X and the green block Y is equal to green switch Y the same for the red one then it will play the little sound effect that you've discovered a secret so switch A is on and it will trigger the bridge to appear so you can walk on it so I'm just gonna show you now how this puzzle works So this is the puzzle we had before, we got the key, go into this room, so then we have to move these blocks out of the way, just run around here, so then the player is going to be forced to push the green one first because they can't, literally they can't do it if they, they can't do the red one first because if they push this block all the way over here then the red block will have nowhere to go. So it's quite simple really um, when you think about it, but this is just an example. You can change it up, do it in any way you want, but um, this is just ha showing you how to um, have multiple switches within a room for your puzzles. There we go. So now we can get to the door and leave. Uh, I'll just show you when you leave the room uh, how the events will reposition themselves. So as you can see, everything's back in its original place. Um, but because we've already done the uh, bridge, the self switch A is on the bridge, so the bridge will always be there, so you don't have to redo the puzzle again just to get past. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful, if you've got any questions let me know below. I'm going to continue this series, I've got a whole list of uh, videos that I want to do on Zelda style puzzles. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.